Okay, today we're going to talk about stereotactic radiosurgery. Stereotactic radiosurgery is a name given to a treatment using radiation therapy which is very, very sharply defined, very focused, so that the object is to radiate only the bad tissue without spreading the radiation to the good tissue. Now that's in contradistinction to the usual radiation therapy that we think about, which is called fractionated radiation therapy. And with fractionated radiation therapy, a big beam comes in one side, goes out the other side, and everything between is affected by the radiation. The scalp, the hair, the bone, the brain, the tumor, and then the same on the other side. Fractionated radiation, by definition, is given in fractions, usually five days a week for between three and six weeks. The idea behind fractionated radiation therapy is to catch those cells which are more vulnerable, which are usually the tumor cells, as opposed to those which are less vulnerable, which are the normal cells. We cover a large area with the fractionated because we're looking for little feelers or tentacles of the tumor which have spread into the normal tissue. We can't remove the normal tissue surgically without damaging the brain, so we're left with trying to give just the right amount of radiation which is going to affect the tumor but not affect the normal brain. Problem is that that distinction between the tumor effect and the brain effect is sometimes hard to predict and very often the normal brain will be damaged to some degree as well. Signs of this damage could include seizures, they could include dementia, they could include uh, actual new tumors being formed by the radiation. On the other hand, stereotactic radiosurgery is to pinpoint that radiation so that the normal tissue, the scalp, the hair, the skull, the normal brain, are not affected. Only the, the, the bad disease is affected. And by definition, uh, at least by the original definition, stereotactic radiosurgery was given at a single dose, one treatment. Over the years, as different devices have become available, that has been expanded. So now we talk about stereotactic fractionated radiation therapy, which has the specificity and the accuracy of radiosurgery, but can be given in two or three or five or more doses. It can be fractionated. There is a little loss of accuracy when we give more than one fraction, but it's felt, at least in some conditions, that this may be beneficial because we can give a total higher dose of radiation. Stereotactic radiosurgery initially was investigated to look at uh, treating abnormal conditions of the brain which were not associated with tumors or which were associated with benign tumors. And the reason for choosing that type of patient in the early days was to see whether there would be any long-term deleterious effects on the brain. So we had to choose a population that we know was going to live long and we could study over a long period of time and we could figure out not what is the effect today or next month, but what's the effect 10 years from now or 20 years from now. As comfort with the technology became available and as experience amassed, then we began to use stereotactic radiosurgery for more types of malignant tumors, more types of aggressive tumors, because we now knew the parameters, how much radiation you can give, how big an area can be radiated, how many times the radiation can be given, etc., etc. So the, the first machine to do this was called the gamma knife. And gamma knife is probably a bad word to use because it says knife, and this is anything but knife. There is no cutting, there is no violation of the skin. But the gamma knife was a device which used a hundred, uh, 201 sources of ionizing radiation which were in a helmet around the head. And each of those sources was highly collimated so that the beam of radiation was very thin, very straight, like a laser beam. And then all of those beams would come together at a, at a sphere. 
and that sphere would have a tremendous dose of radiation, but the surrounding tissue through which the radiation went was not affected or minimally affected. The gamma knife required a fixating device to put on the head, and then a scan with the fixating device in place, and then a treatment algorithm to discover exactly how many shots of radiation could be given to cover the volume of the tumor without spreading out into the normal tissue around the tumor or around the vascular malformation or around whatever needed to be radiated. Since that time, other devices have been uh, developed and marketed. You hear of the X-scalpel. We hear of the cyber knife. Again, we still have these words knife and scalpel, even though these are not surgical treatments. But uh, the difference between these other treatments and the gamma knife is that the other devices use a single beam of highly collimated radiation therapy, but it's shot in from a number of different points, one after another. And maybe there would be 50 or 100 points of shooting, and where all of those points intersected, that would be the target. And that can be, again, figured out by using a scan and by putting some sort of marker on the head or around the head to make sure that the radiation device and the patient were on the same page, so to speak. These different devices have been very effective. Some people would argue that they're more or less accurate than the gamma knife. I'm sure that uh, you can find good arguments in either direction, but the bottom line is that the gamma knife is very, very accurate. Its limitation is it can only be used for the head. The other stereotactic radiosurgical devices can be used for the entire body. Now, obviously, the more an area of the body moves, like the lungs or the heart or the liver, the less accuracy there's going to be. But the less a portion of the body moves, like the prostate or like a bone, which can be held right into place, then the more accuracy there is and the more valuable this type of tool is. In subsequent sessions, we're going to talk about the various uses of stereotactic radiosurgery. Benefits, limitations.